He took my kidney <laughs> then broke my heart. What I do on tour, what I like to do, and I think it's a really great icebreaker, is that I take the local paper on tour. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, I'll say it again. Can you edit that bit out? It's <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I take the local paper on stage and do the first five or ten minutes on local news. As, and as an outsider, I find stuff funny. I'll put a twist on it that they might not have noticed. And uh, it's a great icebreaker. They like it. And, you know, you've, you've made that effort, haven't you? And, and also, it generates loads of material, which I've just collected them all and put in the book. And just to exam- for an example, right? So these are brand <laughs> new. This. These are brand new. That's the Hastings and St. Lentil came in with lasses. September 25th, right? This was the, one of the big news in uh, one of the big news in Hastings was um, this one here. Con man tries it on. <laughs> there you go. That's what that, that's what they're talking about. It says a con man posing as a tree surgeon has targeted people living in the Blacklands area. It is believed the man is pretending to be a tree surgeon to gain access into people's homes. He's not really thought that through, has he? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got any trees you want looking at? Yeah. Are they in here? Well, no. <laughs> Could be a tree house. <laughs> Could be a tree house. John Mayo. There you go. Yes. There you go. He lived in one for a while, didn't he? Yeah. On the music oh, side, yeah. you now, Bob, after all those years of the old grey whistle test where you were like the king of prog rock, although in a way that was unfair on you because I can remember seeing the shy lights on there, Bob Marley, you had all sorts of stuff on the old grey whistle test. But now you're doing the, the country show on Radio 2. Yeah. Now I've listened to that and I've thought, that ain't no country song. <laughs> <laughs> Little feet. Yeah. <laughs> well, Willing. Willing is kind of a country song. But, um, no, you know, the whistle test was very eclectic, as you remember, Terry. I mean, we used to play all sorts of different music and you're right, you know, Curtis Mayfield, Bob Marley, uh, Freddie King, but also uh, Emmy Lou Harris and the Hot Band and New Riders of the Purple Sage and Poco and, and the Eagles, you know. I was talking recently to uh, Dale Watson, who's one of the sort of really authentic contemporary country artists, Texan. Um, and he reckons that the Eagles at their time, you know, were, were more authentic than a lot of the country music that's coming out of uh, Music Row in Nashville these days. So we used to play all that sort of stuff on Whistle Test. So, and I loved Graham Parsons and the Burrito Brothers and all of that. They're, Graham Parsons is the, well, he's the inspiration for so many people whose music I like these days. So there seemed, there is a logic, there is a, a straight line there between what we were doing on Whistle Test and what I'm doing on con- the country program. Well, you now. did have loads of complaints. It was almost like the Blues Brothers, wasn't it? You know, when they play in the country and western. <laughs> the, yeah. The country and western. Oh, to start with. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. the thing, I, I took the program over about 10 years ago. And, uh, you know, when I first started, the show was very big hat and it was very kind of traditional country. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not knocking that in any way. You know, I'm a big fan of Hank Williams, Johnny Cash, and Patsy Cline. And, and, but it had got a bit cheesy. And what they wanted me to do was to kind of bring it up to date. And there is a new generation of artists now that play country, you know, kids who love country, but who've brought it into the 21st century. So you've got, you know, the old Crow Medicine show, for example, or Nickel Creek, lovely bluegrass band of a few years ago. And they were the people that I I started to play because I thought they are, you know, they're, they're the passport into now. They're the bridge from the past to the future so yeah and there was a bit of resistance to that to start with but it's all settled down now and uh, the program's doing really well but i mean what a great life you've had you know playing records that you love even though you know you don't always stay in foot in in employment according to your book book there the whispering years but that's the martyrdom (laughs) for taste isn't it (laughs) you've got to martyr yourself to your taste and your passions but but, but the manchester united thing when did that start for you because i mean you grew up what was it suffolk or somewhere well i was born in northampton yeah I lived in Northampton until I moved to London in 66. But what it was, it, it was it was the Munich air crash. Um, I was nearly 12, so I was 11 years old. And it's difficult to imagine that the same would happen now. But then this was an absolute national tragedy. And um, you saw the black and white images, uh, you know, of the, the plane in the snow. And, the, and then... You know, later, as as the team began to to find its feet again, and in particular Bobby Charlton, you know, seeing these this little these grainy black and white clips of Bobby Charlton. I mean, it was a, another era. You know, we're, we're way over we're more than fifty years ago. You know, but the 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 main news bulletins would have the clips of the team as they began to find their way through the rest of the season and get to the final and everything and you know it was Bobby it was Bobby Charlton that's what really did did it for me I just thought and then beginning to watch him play for England 
I just thought he was fantastic. Uh, everything he represented, I, and um, it's still the same. You know, whenever I see Bobby, I still feel exactly the same. You know, there's something about him. There's something very, he touches emotion. I don't know what it is with me, but he really does. So, you know, the team that Bobby played for, that's the team and, and the whole thing about United and the tragedy at the time. And so I kind of stuck with it. And then, of course, the, the Charlton Best Law era and uh, the 68 European Cup win. And I've just been there with them ever since. Brilliant stuff. I, I, you, oh, you're squirming at this, aren't you? No, not at all. Another not United fan. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't think you get a choice. I mean, you, you, you chose to, to support United. I was, I was born in Bolton. Uh, my dad was a big Bolton Wanderers fan. That's how it works. You know, that's how it works. And, and it's, it took me down to my first game when I was about nine, and I've been going ever since. So, and I, and I love Bolton Wanderers. I absolutely love them with a passion. And and uh, you know, there's something to be said for like just just. It, you know the highlights of your season are maybe beating United, maybe beating Arsenal, maybe beating Chelsea, and and sort of realizing that your top six is the best you're, you're going to do, sort of thing. And is that is that is that top six is good, obviously, because it measures your success in the season. But does it really matter? You know, in terms of like finishing sixth or seventh and getting through to the UEFA Cup, mm. and then on a November night mm-hmm. playing Lokomotiv Plovdiv, <laughs> yes, yes. Exactly. at the Reebok. With well, I mean, to be honest, people, when, when I was a kid, you would go to the match. Just to see, will we win today? Yeah. And all the other stuff was almost peripheral. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it'd be great if we won the cup, but you actually went to see that day's entertainment. Yeah. Will United beat Wolverhampton Wanderers? Yeah. yeah. You know, will we beat Ipswich Town? It's a tricky one. Yeah. Well, our, our local team these days, because we, we live in Oxfordshire, and uh, Dick Cot Town is our local team. And uh, we regularly go and watch Dick Cot Town. You know, we'd be we'll be one of seventy or eighty yeah. people there, and uh, you know, th- th- there's 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 one stand, and then we're behind the goal that Dick Cotter facing in the first half, and then when they change round, we walk around the edge and, and go up the other end. Your poor kids, <laughs> and uh, you know, Dermot O'Leary has come down with us a few times as well. He's a he's a Dick Cotter Town fan. He wears the shirt and everything. <laughs> And, you know, a lot of my, my son's friends, uh, particularly Miles, my oldest son, his friends, 